Hi guys. So this woman in this video was accused of witchcraft in Umwegu Mpa Benda local government area of Abia State. And she wasn't just accused of witchcraft, she was beaten to a pulp, she was dehumanized, she was ridiculed, and everything was done to this woman but human. So I'm just going to let you guys watch the video for yourself and then I'll come back with a full story of what actually led to this sort of ill treatment that was meted on this middle-aged woman. So watch guys. <laughs> Which one person? Who was that? Five, five. One, one, one. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Just one. When you have a small one, I'm going to see you. When you have one, you have one. I'm sure you've seen the video and I know there are mixed feelings and there are, there are and will be mixed reactions from the video of that woman being beaten by youths. So this is the story behind what happened in that video. That woman goes by the name Miss Amarachi Okechi. She's said to be 45 years old. And like I said, she's from Umuebu uh, Nka Bende, local government area of Abia State. She's said to have um, uh, 10 children and she is a widow. So this woman was accused of being a witch by her co-wife. Now, when I say co-wife, I'm not referring to a woman married to her husband, but a woman married to her husband's younger brother. So this other woman married to her younger brother, uh, her husband's younger brother goes by the name Mrs. Patience Obina. She's also 45 years old. So um, the story goes thus, when Amarachi's husband died, the younger brother of her husband, who is the husband of Mrs. Patience now, was said to have collected the offering and he gave nothing to the widow of his deceased brother who is Amarachi. Now that sort of pained Amarachi so much he didn't sit well with her at all and she felt at a point where she was going through pains of losing her husband she had to sort for money to bury her husband all alone without any assistance from her husband's younger brother but when people made offerings contributions in the regard to her husband's burial her husband's brother took away everything without even considering her to give her something from the offering and that was really painful to her and we understand out of the the pains of what she felt at the time she did say that god was going to judge him and his entire family for taking that from her so it turned out that after she made some utterances out of anger probably it didn't take long after the burial of her husband that the husband's younger brother who had taken offering from the husband's burial also did die and the wife of the younger brother, who is now Patience Obina, suspected that Amarachi was behind the death of her husband and also her husband's older brother, who was Amarachi's husband. And shortly afterwards, Patience's daughter also took ill and couldn't walk. She has been bedridden for the past 
three years. And according to this woman, patience, Madam Amarachi had said, has had threatened that since her husband's younger brother took away the offering from her, that it was not going to be well with him and his family, and that she had once threatened the daughter to tell her that she was going to deal with her and she will make sure that she 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 falls ill and stays indoors and only peeps from the window to see people outside now that is a serious threat i know and it didn't take long before the the daughter actually took ill and since then truly the girl has been bedridden so that left madame patience obina with one person to point her finger at and that's how well, unfortunately was amarachi okichi so we understand that several times patients will embarrass Amarachi, call her a witch wherever she saw her and Amarachi reported her to some people in the village who then asked her to call patients to the village square. But patients refused to show up until an elder in the village decided to summon both women to the village square where the matter was heard and According to patients, uh, Amarachi's daughter, Onyechi, she said when they were heard at the village where they decided that her mother was innocent, having heard the whole matter. But Madam Patience Obina, on her own version of the story, said that when they were both sum summoned at the village square, uh, Amarachi admitted to have done something to her daughter. And she said Amarachi's son was also there when she admitted to that. Now, whether that is true or not, we do not really know. But all parties spoke authoritatively as to what they believe was the actual story. So, Onyenyechi, who happened to be Amarachi's daughter, had her own version of the story. She said on the 23rd of August 2022, her mother called her and said to her they were going to a native doctor. She was summoned to a native daughter where she could prove her innocence that she had she didn't kill her husband nor the husband's brother neither was she responsible for the husband's brother's daughter's protracted illness and when she said she told her mom not to go to the native doctor's place because she felt the native doctor may have been compromised but her mother insisted she was going because she knew she was innocent and she needed to prove her innocence so they went and she said thereafter she got a call from her mother and her mother said the native doctor said there was a time she made a statement an utterance out of anger against her younger her husband's younger brother's family and her mother admitted that she did make a statement but it was out of anger and that was it she didn't do anything afterwards she didn't go to any native doctor to do anything evil to him or his family and the native doctor also told the village, villagers who accompanied them to his place that when they returned back to their village, they should search Amarachi's house for a mirror which he claimed was a mirror she uses in monitoring people. So when they got back to their village, they ransacked Amarachi's house looking for the so-called mirror. Unfortunately, they didn't find any mirror. According to Onyenyechi, Amarachi's daughter, they didn't find a mirror because her mother had none. So, when they didn't find the mirror, they took her out and they began to beat her up. They beat this woman to a pulp and they tied her both hands to the back, tied her legs. And according to Onyinyechi, at a point for fear of being killed, her mother had to admit to all the allegations just to save her life. But she she didn't do any of those things she admitted to she only admitted out of duress and afterwards she said they took her mother to the village square where they, they tied her up there and they still left her there overnight they got back in the morning and continued with the flogging and they asked her to take them to the native doctor who had done whatever it was that he did for against her husband's uh, brother's family but she told them that she didn't go to any native doctor that she went to a church and cried her heart to god out of bitterness and she offered to take them to the church if they would 
and they followed her to the church she took them to the the church and when they got there the woman of god was said to have died some months ago but the man of god there according to Oninichi, asked them to seek forgiveness from amarachi because she was innocent and that the spirits were angry with them so they should ask forgiveness forgiveness from amarachi and so they can be forgiven and according to Oninichi, her mother's co-wife asked her to forgive her that she was sorry and her mother then prayed for the poor wife's daughter on the altar then they all went back to the village again to their village where they continued to flog her mother so Onyeji said it was when she got wind of what was happening to her mother that and at, at that point again all the people whom her mother was owing showed up and said she had to pay them all their money or else they were going to beat her to death so amarachi was left with the burden to bear she said she had to pay eighty thousand naira that day to clear all her mother's debts and she ran to wazobia fm where she raised alarm as to what was happening and all thanks to the radio station who um, made a lot of noise about it and the uh, Abia State's first lady heard about it and deployed people to save the widow from the angry youths. Eventually they saved her but the, the youths insisted that they were not going to take her Amarachi to the hospital alone. They will have to take her to the hospital and also take the, the 23 years old daughter of her co-wife who had been sick and bedridden whom is one of the reasons why Amarachi was being accused of being a witch that they had to take both of them to the hospital. So the, the team that went to rescue Amarachi had to agree as that was the only condition that was going to make Amarachi to be released to them so they took both women to the hospital. Now Patience Obina in her own version of the story she stated that Amarachi did make those threats and she said that there was a time her, her daughter was greeting Amarachi but she wouldn't answer her greetings she would rather warn her not to greet her again and that was after the incident of her her husband taking the offering from her from Amarachi's husband's burial and she said she did make that threat to the girl that she was going to make sure that she fell fell ill and uh, unable to walk out of the house but only peeps through the window to see people so that left her with no other person to point fingers at as the person responsible for her husband's death and her daughter's illness but to point at Amarachi who had clearly admitted at the village square when she was first summoned and had also confessed that day that a friend of hers took her to a village in Anambra state where the native doctor did whatever it is he did against her a patient's husband and daughter and they said they went to to bring that her friend who she alleged took her to the native doctor but that her friend had since you know taking off from the village this her friend has been at large they couldn't um get hold of this her friend to answer for the allegations or even take them to the native doctor where he had taken amarachi to do whatever it was she allegedly did but as it is right now amarachi is claiming total innocence and she's calling for justice for how she was um humiliated the extrajudicial attack that was meted upon her and all of those. Her daughter is also calling for justice to be served. They're calling that all the people that were are involved in humiliating Amarachi and beating her up should be arrested. Thus far, we understand that no arrests have been made. But one thing is certain. There's a sick girl on ground, 23 years old, old who is also pleading that whatever Amarachi did to her should be undone because she wants to move on with her life. She has dreams and aspirations. She wants to pursue her career. But since the sickness, illness, she's been unable to work. And even while in the hospital currently, nothing has been diagnosed as to the reason for her legs being ill and unable to work. All they've diagnosed is malaria. So it appears there's something truly spiritual about this girl's illness so we really hope and wish that um, 
they will get to the root of this matter because it's beyond accusing a person of witchcraft that someone whose life is now on board. But the question is, is it truly a human being who is behind that witchcraft or they are just yet to explore uh, the medical options to find what is actually wrong with her? Whatever it is, it was not a good treatment method on Amarachi. Nobody should go through such extrajudicial attack. Jungle justice is not the way out. There are proper channels, there are means where we can channel our grievances and we should, we should make use of all those means. That is why they have been put in place. If we continue on this path of jungle justice, we may just end the innocent life. You never know. And if you're one of those who engages in such acts of jungle justice, it's time to stop. Because tomorrow, it may just be you or your loved ones. And guess what? You may be innocent, but no one will believe you. So we hope that the Abia state government will not just relent that they will get to the root of this matter, involve the local authorities in the community where this act, where this mob action occurred and ensure that justice is truly served on all parties, all parties involved. So guys, take care of yourself, take care of your emotions, take care of your mental health, be kind to yourself, be kind to the people around you, and until I come your way next time with another story, be safe. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like it, share it, and do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't fail to turn on your notifications so you'll be the first to know when we upload our next video. I remain Dr. Sigil Lukun and I love you.